Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into another edition of Slow Your Roll. I am Dominic Lawrence on alongside writer for the Yaki Way Report, Jesse Caulfield. As always, Thanksgiving episode, basically. Oh, yes. 48 hours, yeah, ish. I don't know. Give or take. I mean, yeah. Yeah. give or take. It's two days. It's like 36 hours. Yeah, no, 36, yeah. 36 so, hours from now. Pretty much. Because it's noon. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 36 <clears throat> hours. So, Thanksgiving Turkey Day, a lot of football on that day. Yeah. Uh, not some not great football, but but football nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, we know that <laughs> the Cowboys will play. They're bad. Yeah. I mean, histor- and they're playing the Giants, who also are bad. Well, historically, the Lions have been Thanksgiving and bad. Yeah. But they're good. Yeah, and now they're a ten point favorite in their game, so that could be a blowout. That that's what they tend to do. Yeah. But you know what? But Green they Bay, Green Bay, Miami, Green Bay and Miami which should be a good game though. So we got one. We got one. The night game. Maybe. So stay awake. We'll see, we'll, we'll see what Make sure you don't go into a food coma for that game. We'll see what Dolphins do. But anyway, Jesse's gonna start us off talking about how the NFL is down. We're gonna talk Bryce and Will Levis, new life for those guys. Uh the Pats <laughs> melt in Miami again. And uh, I'm going to have some college talk. And Juan Soto is, the idea is heating up to go to the Sox. So I'm sure we'll uh-huh. remain pessimistic. But, you know, uh-huh. at least it's something. At least it's something. Mm. You know, like I thought it was a 10% chance. Now I'm like, you know, 30%. 30. 30. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? Almost a third. I know. About a third. I don't know if I want him, though, to be honest with you. Because, like, we didn't really need a left-handed outfield. Listen, we'll get there. Well, before we get there, I'll give you one reason why. Okay. You should. Because it means ownership is back to spending. No, I, I understand like the that. other the other things. I just yes. just the baseball itself. Strictly that guy. Yeah. On the team. Like I, I it's a left handed outfielder. We kinda have some of those already. But all right. With that, Jesse, get us started talking about the NFL in general. Yeah. They're down bad right now. Yeah, a little I bit. I mean it yeah. Depends on what we're talking about. Yes. So the, the quality yeah. of the teams. Yes. They are. They still have us all by the balls. They still have our all our money. They're still selling tickets out the wazoo and selling jerseys. That's not the problem. Problem is on the field. It's bad. Tom Brady said like maybe two years ago. Maybe it was last year. No, I think it was before the year this year. It was sometime. Yeah, he said it. But basically, he said that the product on the field sucks right now. Mm-hmm. And I felt he was a little harsh at the time. Because he's Tom Brady, and like he's so good at everything that once he's gone, it cannot help but retract yes. and get worse. Like it just has to by default. But it is, it's really bad right now. Just across the league, team play is, and it's getting, it's actually starting to frustrate me. I texted you this. I mean, I, mean, I actually think I said it on the show last week. Yeah. The best teams in the NFL would, right now, would lose. Mm-hmm. to the worst teams in the NFL of the early 2000s. All right, that's a bit harsh. Maybe not like the 16 and 0 uh <laughs> the 0 and 16 Browns or the 0 and 16 Lions team. I get I get your point, but that's a bit harsh. But the <laughs> standard bad team of the early 2000s. If you took the top 5 right now and and faced them against the top 10 of the early 2000s. They're I'd, not they're I'd, having a hard time beating even 8, 9 and 10. Yeah, I'd pick I'd pick the the best the worst teams of the early 2000s. I mean, you know, we can look at the I mean, the talent across the league is not, if you just look talent-wise, like people are doing things that I've never seen before. Like every, every week there's a crazy catch from one of these super wide receivers we got, like Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson, Amon Ross St. Brown, A.J. Brown. Like in theory, I do think the talent on field might actually be better than it has ever been. Oh, it definitely is. And that makes sense. Look at, I mean, every sport, that's just kind of how it is. Oh, yeah. As we learn the science of the sports, the human body, we learn how to train it better, mm. how to enhance it better, not cheating, <laughs> but how to enhance it better, uh, and how to play better, how to play smarter. So the talent is <laughs> higher than it's ever been. Mm. I mean, across, across the athletic spectrum, people mm. are running faster than they ever before, jumping higher, all this stuff, mm. without steroids. And yet the product on the football field is garbage compared to what it used to be. I mean, we talk about these great players, these great quarterbacks like Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, and they are great. Uh, They are these guys that, you know, match somewhat of the talent of the Bradys, the Mannings, the Breeze back in the day. But again, the talent is all over the place. Why is it not clicking? Mm. I mean, it could be a couple things. I think coaching 
oh, I think that's across the league I has think that's the biggest thing. plummeted. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, ignoring the fact that Bill Belichick is not currently employed as an NFL coach, uh, sure, he's gone. Uh, Tony Dungy is not in the league anymore. Coach Cower retired. Mm. Like, all these guys have been replaced but not matched. All right, I love that. Replaced but not matched. Yes, we still have some great coaches like Andy Reid, but, you know, he matches himself up with the best quarterback in the league. So look at them. They're good at X's and O's all the time. Mm -hmm. But that leaves a a hole in the rest of the league where no one can match up to that. But I even still think that the Chiefs themselves just – I mean, they're great. Patrick Mahomes is great. They play almost flawless football, it seems. They can win all these nitty-gritty games, hence why they have won – was it now eight Mm. one-score games this season? Yeah. But at the same time, when I look at them, I watched the Patriots dynasty, the greatest dynasty in the history of sports for Mm. 20 years. It was not perfect, Mm. but it was such clean football every Mm. single week. I don't quite see that from the Chiefs. And I'm not trying to be insulting when I say that. Hmm. They are clean. See, the they Chiefs are, are the, the one, standard of the league the right Chiefs now. The Chiefs are the one I would say the, are the closest to those old teams. Oh, they are. <clears throat> and yet the height they reach is just not quite what I've seen. Like it was like Peyton Manning and Tom Brady under center is unmatched. Patrick Mahomes can read a defense very well. He talks about how he's learned to read defenses very well. And I think he probably is currently the best at reading defenses. But I don't know, something about Tom and Peyton. They just controlled the game under center unlike anything I've ever seen. And you watch old clips of Tom. He goes up to the line, so calm. He stands there for a second. He looks over. 53 is the mic, whatever he says. And then he, uh, he goes under center, says hike, and James Devlin back there, seeks out 53. He's the key block, springs whoever the running back was, Sonny Michelle at the time. Mm-hmm. So easy. Mm-hmm. So easy. Again, Tom walks to the line. He looks over everything. This is clearly zone defense. The ball's going to this guy. I'm not looking anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And if it's not, if it's not what it looks like, I'm I'm wrong. Well, then I got James White back. Yes. And although yes, Patrick Mahomes is clean. Blah 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 blah. Andy Reid is great at X's and O's, putting mm-hmm. these guys together. But man, he's there though. I guess the one exception. Yes. Because although yes. I think they are vulnerable this year. This, that's a different conversation. The that's team a ta- is but that's a talent thing. Yes. So much from the rest of the league and so much of the success of the Chiefs have been the fact that they have been the X's O team and other so many other up. teams shoot themselves in the foot constantly. Yes. How many of those games against the Bills should have actually been won by the Bills? Oh, at least if at it wasn't least for one of them. McDermott. No, I know. 100%. Which goes back to the coaching. I think Buffalo is the best example that you could give if you were trying to compare teams right now. I definitely would probably say that. Yes, because they are... Have been, and have been <laughs> extremely talented. But my God, has Sean McDermott, and he's not the worst coach in the league, mm-hmm. cost them games and huge games, maybe even a Super Bowl trip or two. Mm-hmm. I agree. Maybe in a championship. But uh, one of the huge <clears throat> things that you can tell about, Bill always said it, about how, what bad coaching and bad teams do, they turn the ball over, mm-hmm. and my God, some of these quarterbacks and some of these guys – are, cause, are making the dumbest turnovers I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I mean, the quarterbacks are obvious, like some horrific interceptions. Will Levis has thrown a couple. Even some of the better QBs, Josh Allen mm-hmm. has done some ridiculous QBs in his, in his career. I mean, Patrick Mahomes this year has not had, I mean, you know, he's still clean, but some of his interceptions have oh, been early, ugly. Oh, early in the year it was. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Lamar Jackson, two-time MVP. Fumbles a lot. Yes, he does. Uh, penalties is the other one. I mean, I don't, I don't have to tell you a statistic to tell a football fan that penalties are up across the league. Yes. You can just watch it from the product. Mm-hmm. It's not just penalties are up. Uh, last year, an average of 11.88 penalties per game. This year, an average of 13.15 penalties per game. Not a huge jump, but it's the type of penalties. Mm-hmm. So effing many pre-snap penalties. Yeah. Uh, illegal formations, illegal shifts. I watched 20 years of Patriots dynasty football those were maybe once every other week you get one of those illegal shift or illegal formation. Mm. Unheard of penalties back in the day. Mm. It is, you're getting like three or four a game of pre-snap penalties. I know. It's insane. And they're like, they're back to back. I know. Like, how many broadcasts have I seen? I've made several jokes on this podcast about how the broadcasts are like, 
every time a flag is oh, another flag, what do you know, another penalty, like yeah. almost seems half of the big plays are being taken back this year <clears throat> because of stupid penalties. Mm-hmm. I feel like, I mean, illegal block in the back used to happen a lot. Yes, but it mostly, but that happened a lot because we used to have way more kick and punt returns than we do now. Yes, and although that, I'm not seeing as much as illegal block in the back on kick returns. But that's only because there's just simply not as many returns anymore. I still feel like when there is, I'm still getting a penalty every time there's a return. Uh, it's just, it's a holding now. It's not an illegal block in the back or like, you know, it just these, these crazy things that are like, the game wasn't this messy, messy mm-hmm. when I was watching. It was so clean. It was so, everyone had their, their X's and O's down. Everyone had the fundamentals down. Yeah. This is a joke. I know. I think um, there's- It's still fun to watch though. I think there's- Two big reasons. Now, obviously, there's a multitude of reasons, but the two biggest reasons are there's never been more money in the NFL, but that also means that the owners are that more impatient and where it used to cost money to fire a coach, now the league makes so much money that mm. I can fire a coach, eat the $40, $50 million, and it's nothing. It's a rounding error. Like, all these, all these owners are worth billions and billions. Like, it's nothing. Yeah. So no one's patient anymore. It costs nothing to fire the coach. Right. And because it's a salary cap league, even if I don't think it's all the coach's fault, I can't really fire players because I'm going to be penalized for it because it's still up against my cap. So the fastest thing as well, just fire the coach. So that's the biggest thing. Um, and the other one fire is the coach, fire the GM. Yeah. Fire yeah. the coach, fire the GM every two, three years. Let's start over again with someone who's never yeah. been a GM and someone who's never been a head coach before all the time. And the other reason is I think there is so much emphasis on offense and offensive play calling that these head coaches, they used to be a lot more CEO types. Now a lot of coaches are not only the head coach, but they're calling the plays, whether it be on defense or offense. And therefore, obviously, I mean, Kyle Shanahan is the best example of this. His special teams suck. And we think at the end of games, his overall game management is not good. Well, you can't tell me that part of that isn't because he's so tied to that play sheet and in the game to game, uh, play to play, that he is losing track of the big picture, right? A lot of times back in the early 2000s, head coaches were more CEO coaches. Now, in game situations, Bill would get on that mic and tell the offensive play caller what to do or the defensive play caller what to do but they weren't calling every single play throughout the entire game Mm -hmm. and when they stepped in it was always because they had looked at the larger picture game right and then they were saying okay now i want to do this because i've been looking at the big picture i think those are the two biggest things i think it's no coincidence that sean payton and jim harbaugh with two teams that their talent is not that amazing particularly Denver's. I mean, this is still a defense that gave up 70 points last year. Yeah. Like, yeah. like this was, a, they're in cap hell because of the Russell thing. The Chargers, now Jim did a very nice job in the draft fixing the offensive line, but they are not special on the outside at all. You saw it the minute J.K. Dobbins went down last night and they couldn't run the ball. Well, who are they throwing to? Lad McConkey and Quinton Johnson, who can't catch hey, anything. Don't you disrespect Lad McConkie. I He's good, but he's also a rookie, and that's your only target now. Quinton Johnson can't catch anything, like, at all. Yeah, <laughs> he was bad last night. So, and yet those two guys have their teams way over expectations, and it's Jim Harbaugh's first year. And by the way, Jim Harbaugh, after they moved off how many players? They moved off Keenan Allen. They moved off Mike. Like, they moved off a ton of people. And Austin Eckler. Denver started the year over under five and a half. They're over that. Chargers started the year over under seven and a half. They're, they're already at that. That's, it's not a coincidence because we run out coaches so much that all these coaches, like the coaching around the league is not that good. It's not. It's, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but when you have Sean Payton and Jim Harbaugh, their institutional knowledge, they've been around this game so long. Mm. Their advantage over everyone that they play for the most part is so massive that they can be in these situations that aren't ideal and they're going to way exceed expectations mm. because that's what's going on in the sport right now. I buy that a lot. Yeah, I, I, think that's, I think that's the two biggest things. Just quick shout out to that person that parallel parked behind <laughs> us. They got that on camera. Um, uh, that was yeah, a great that, parallel parking job. It was, uh, but I, I mean, I buy that a lot. Yeah. Like if there's, there needs to be a time 
like how, how can anyone take the reins of the next generation of coaches mm -hmm. if you don't give them time to learn how to do it exactly you might it might be a little ugly at first mm -hmm. it might be a little messy at first i mean like, i think i think the average is there's about seven new job openings every year now that's like a third of the league <laughs> Like, I'm not the biggest fan of the job Gerard Mayo has done this year. Mm -hmm. And I expect he wasn't after yesterday. But I have seen some improvement as the year's gone on. But even if it is the rest of the year is as bad as yesterday, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would just want him fired. Mm. I get you. Because I understand. One, for just Gerard Mayo's sake, well, he's then just going to get a maybe what a linebacker job somewhere, mm -hmm. probably not even the defensive play caller somewhere. And he's going to have to make his way up the the hierarchy again mm -hmm. and that's just a bunch of stuff he's already learned and then you're going to bring in a maybe another unproven guy doesn't work oh two years get out yeah no that, yeah. that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. yeah I, I think that's exactly the two biggest reasons why and then the co if it's coaching's bad it's just going to snowball 100 mm -hmm. talent can't overcome bad coaching uh, that's what bill always says and you see that um all right so from that let's talk about gerard mayo's pay periods <laughs> That was good. That was a good transition. Um, so the Pats melt in Miami again, because that seems like just what they consistently do. Um, listen, I, I, I've been, I was waiting for this moment. Like Drake May had played too good lately. Like you knew between the rookie quarterback and what the roster was, they had to come crashing down to earth and have an ugly performance at some point. Of course it was in Miami. Because that's just how it goes if you're the New England Patriots. Yeah. Whether it's Tom Brady in the dynasty or not, there it's just as you said, you texted me, it's written in the cosmos. Yeah. That that we will go down to Miami and play like garbage. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to take from that game other than I expected it. You know, Drake May had a fumble, Drake May threw a pick. Did they even score in the first half? Patriots, no. Yeah, I didn't think it so. Was a fourth quarter scoop and score and <clears throat> Yeah, whatever the, the touchdown drive was. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of stopped watching at that point. The yeah. other game, the other game on network TV was far more interesting. Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> well, it was. <laughs> there yeah. was a crazy ending. But uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to take from this game, other than like I know some people are trying to say Miami still has a chance, which I guess in theory they do, but like the ground they have to make up is too too much. Mm. But hell, I mean, you know, maybe if they upset Green Bay on Thanksgiving, okay, maybe, but I, I doubt it. But. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Do you, you have any thoughts on this game? Well, I mean, it's a little bit of a, you ran into a hotter team than you. Yeah, Dolphins have felt better the past couple of weeks with getting Tua back. They've been playing well since Tua's been back, or at least playing better. So they should at least feel good. They were at home. We know they play well in the warm weather. So there is, like, excuses. Mm -hmm. We yeah, The Patriots were probably playing a little too well, you know, we don't, I'm, I'm not trying to trash Alex Van Pelt. We're not the f biggest fan of his. You know, it's, it, it had to come crashing down. We, his play calling, you know, a guy like that just, he was getting too lucky. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised it came crashing down. Yeah. And um, this hopefully was just another moment for Gerard Mayo will learn something and take another step. Mm. And then in theory, the team will take a step behind him. Yeah. Because <clears throat> like, it's, it's, you're not learning anything when it's getting better. Mm-hmm. So, like, now that it's crashed, mm -hmm. it's crashed again, um, Gerard Mayo can sit these guys down and be like, all right, we still have a lot to learn. I yeah. mean, I figured you'd have a lot to learn anyway. But, mm -hmm. you know, now we can get back there. I thought you guys weren't soft anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know what? I was critical of the, the soft comment, but they did respond to it. Yeah, they did. They did. I mean, I think more than anything, what's, what's helped this team is going to – going to uh you know it's really gonna help this team what Jabril peppers is back <laughs> great safety uh indeed and like duggar had a terrible game did he duggar, had, duggar. i'll be honest I, I watched very little of it because well i didn't really watch the second half maybe he had a better second half yeah no i did watch some of the first half he did not have well, a good listen half. i don't care about second halves when you're getting blown out I do, Much. but I don't. I, I, I kind of don't. If there's a response, like, you know, like, all right. Like, I mean, listen, I don't care if you just lay down and die and just yeah, don't do anything. Pull but the like, Jets. Yeah, if you pull a Jets and you quit, then I obviously care. Yeah. But, like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not all about giving guys token points for facing prevent defense and, and mm. teams that have 
I mean, listen, you're not, I'm sorry, when you're blowing a team out, you're not going to take the second half as seriously. Yeah. The, 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 the coverage gets soft, the intensity goes down, like, so, you know. I, I didn't really watch it anyway, the second half. Like, and it was over. Like, it was over at halftime. They were up, yeah. like, 24 nothing. Something like that. Yeah, you're not coming back from that. If it was Tom Brady. That would be the only time it wouldn't be yeah. over. And even in a regular season game in Miami, it was probably over, even with Tom. Maybe. Playoffs. It, you're right. If it was anywhere else on earth, it wouldn't be, <laughs> but because it was in Miami, yes. it's over. Yeah. We're not allowed to play well in Miami. It's yeah. just not allowed. All right. From that court, rookie quarterback to some second-year quarterbacks, I want to talk Bryce Young and Will Levis. Both of them have really improved the last couple of weeks. I mean, I don't know if they've improved as players. I have no idea about that. <laughs> but they are playing way better. Now, Will Levis, finally, I was waiting for it. It happened. He threw a horrendous pick six uh, late in that game against the Texans. But they ended up winning anyway. <clears throat> Bryce Young has managed to play extremely clean football um, for weeks now. Dave Canales does have a history of getting the most out of quarterbacks. Um, that time to sit must have been really good for him. I think the same for Levis after the injury. I think that's helped him calm down. He still had a back-breaking INT. But both of these guys, I think, have easily bought themselves another year. The biggest reason, though, for that is this draft class is just its just bad. It's really bad. Shador Sanders has some ego. Uh, his athleticism is meh. His arm is good. He's a good prospect. But if he was in this, like last year's draft class he probably would have been the fourth or fifth quarterback taken. He'll be the first one taken here, but I don't think the Panthers and the Titans are going to have the first overall pick. Like, it seems like the Giants are going to. So, and then Cam Ward has a personality that is not for everybody. I'll just leave it at that. It's not the greatest personality in the world. Rubs a lot of people the wrong way. And he plays a little bit too much backyard football type. And then the rest of them are a mess. Carson Beck has been a mess. You know, Quinn Ewers can be a mess, even though he's in an absolute perfect situation with the best roster money can buy. So simply with the Titans and the Panthers, you look around, Bryce is showing at least the competency and the instinctive nature of the position that got him drafted where he is. Will Levis is a big, strong kid with a big arm and great athleticism. I think both these guys have bought themselves more time because if you look at this draft class, other than Sanders, I don't think anybody else on the board is as good of a prospect as either of these two were coming out of college. And that's me even saying because I thought Bryce was overrated coming out of college. But the way it is, the way they've played recently, it's only year two. I think both these guys have a fighting chance again. I like Levis as a prospect more than Bryce. Um, I don't know if you can coach that kind of recklessness out of them, but at least the last two, three weeks have showed you can minimize it. And maybe that's enough. But uh, both these guys looked dead a month and a half ago, particularly Bryce. But they both have life right now. So, mm. um, any thoughts? I mean, you know, just going back, I guess, to that earlier conversation of <laughs> patience. Patience. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've said for a while now, like, stop just giving up immediately on these quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Like, Baker Mayfield has found his place in the NFL mm -hmm. four teams later. Yes. It can happen. Geno Smith has found his place in the NFL like a decade after he was drafted. Yeah, kind of. He, he looks like a backup, but yes. But he, he found a place. He, he's, he has his name in NFL history, mm -hmm. um, whatever that means. Yeah. And, and, you know, the Darnold thing, is the thing with working. Bri the thing with Bryce, too, is like I said, they have a head coach now that has a history of getting the most out of quarterbacks. They have something for him now, right? They found a very nice run game with Chuba Hubbard. Um, the kid they drafted out of South Carolina, I cannot say his name, legit, legit, whatever, has come on very nicely. Uh, Deontay Johnson is gone, but, but the kids come on pretty well. So, and whereas when Bryce walked into this league, it was kind of a hopeless situation. They were, they were really bad. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, it was tough for any rookie quarterback, uh, much less someone with his physical limitations. I mean, he's short. He's not that big. He does not have a special arm. Right. So it was as a rookie, those physical limitations and what he was facing, that offensive line, that lack of weapons. I mean, old man Adam Thielen was his only guy to throw to last year. Like that was that was tough to overcome. Not to give him a total of like, all the excuses because he played terrible and he took that in the, the beginning of this year and he was awful. Um, but at least I think he's got a fighting chance in Carolina now. Hmm. 
I mean, I, back to, I think they, they, sh- they just should. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, what do you, what are you gonna do? Mm-hmm. There's not, a, there's not talk of really. Oh, Russell Wilson's gonna be available again. No, no, he found his place. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe Justin Fields could be on the market again. Yeah, but like, that's, that's not, that's yeah. not a Listen, solution I, I, either. I don't. I Fields has been in the league now for four years. He's he's walked into a very nice situation in Pittsburgh and couldn't keep the job, and was clearly the thing holding well, back their offense. It's a little unfair because Russell was always going to come back and get a chance. Um, I, think I if, guess unless he was no, elite, if Justin, elite. If Justin had played better in the passing game, I, I think, think I guess they would have left elite. Russell on the on the bench. But he wasn't even. Yeah, he needed no, to be elite. He wasn't even good in the passing game. And they did it with smoke and mirrors. But eventually, when they faced a good team and they had to score more than seventeen points, Justin couldn't do it because Justin couldn't throw the ball. But he's down like, the field. But he's maybe the one guy that's going to be on the market. Yes, but he's not a starter at this point. I don't think I, I don't know how anyone can look at him at this point and think that he's a starting quarterback in this league. Maybe Trevor Lawrence is on the market, but I would highly doubt that. No, no, not with that contract. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, I, I forgot he, ju- he did just sign that. Uh, yeah, extension. Uh, 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 Daniel Jones is on the market. Daniel Jones is on the market, but is he any better than Bryce? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, he's a he's bad. He's a he's a bigger athlete, at least a little stronger, <laughs> and he can run. But his arm is actually not really better than Bryce's. No, he sucks. And I would say Bryce, at least when Bryce is playing well and on the high end, is more accurate than Daniel Jones. Maybe. Like Daniel's not accurate. He wasn't even accurate in college. He didn't complete 60% of his passes in college. But I mean, that's that might be like the only two. And yet other than that is draft. Like Exactly. Aaron Rodgers. Like it's they could even you want to you want to do that you want to go to a 40 oh, oh. 41 year old who's no. a pain in the ass no i, f- I kind of figure he'll just retire i think he's going to be out of the league even if he doesn't want to be maybe yeah. I th- I, listen he should retire and i i it's i feel like he will yeah i think he will too but i don't know he's he's him he might decide he doesn't want to end the way it ended so i guess but it might not be his choice but yeah i think the big thing is good for these kids they've bought themselves another year and if either one of these teams tries to go back to the quarterback thing in the draft, I think it's ma- it's malpractice at this point. Unless they somehow had the first overall pick and wanted to go with Shador. Yeah. And even and even Shador, I'll be honest, as a prospect, you could make the argument that Will Levis is a better prospect than Shador coming out of college. I don't I I don't think you would want to go to either of those teams anyway. Oh, Shador? Yeah. I don't think he would either. Even if they were, I mean, maybe Tennessee, if they were better, because like yeah. Nashville, Tennessee, all that. Well, stuff. I mean, the thing with Tennessee is, and good God, they've been maddening as a gambler, um, is they always play way better than the final score, but Will Levis would do stupid things and mm-hmm. turn the football I mean, over. The, the defense Apart is good. from the Lions game when they gave up 52, their defense has actually played very well yeah. most of the season. So, But anyway. You're not throwing anybody, though. Moving on. Jesse, before we go to our break, let's talk about, let's talk some baseball here. All right. You know, for this one, you get the you get the video out. Do it. Do, do it up. Do it up. Because like it's not. I'll talk a little Juan Soto. I mean, I'll talk Juan Soto. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, he's the name I was wants to. Everyone wants to hear, but like it's not so much about Soto. Dumb. I think you're right. What? It needs to be this. Right. And then this. Move. Although I think my case really helps with my phone here. Oh, but a this, case does help. Since I took the case off my yeah, phone, it's, is, it's a pain in the ass. This is, to... the, this is the move. All right, those Red Sox. You know, the, the media insists, and they will not stop talking about it, that the Red Sox are going to make that, that full throttle splash that they were talking about last year. And I guess you could make, like, maybe they really did try, and Heim Bloom just totally messed it up. <clears throat> I guess it's possible. He messed up a lot of things. Maybe he messed that one up, too. But um, until it happens, I'm still going to be the skeptic. But, man, like, the Red Sox apparently are interested in Juan Soto, Max Fried, Blake Snell, Teoscar Hernandez, Corbin Burns, Roki Sasaki, and Garrett Crochet. And they apparently really want at least two of those pitchers. Now, I've heard maybe if it's going to be, like, a Max Fried, a Bello will need to be dealt somewhere. Maybe, maybe, but still, they seem to be back in the day when we had Theo Epstein running everything, or even Dombrowski, where we're in on everybody again. And listen, 
I do love that. That sounds great. But again, I got to be the skeptic. However, this morning, uh, Hector Gomez, a beat writer from the Dominican Republic, not related to the Adams family, uh, again, said this morning that the Red Sox increased their offer to Juan Soto in both total value and years. So maybe they saw the other offers from the other teams. There's five teams that gave offers to Juan Soto. Red Sox, Yankees, Mets, Dodgers, and the Toronto Blue Jays. And actually, when I saw that list, I got a little happy. Because all those places have high income taxes. So that won't matter. That's off the table. Income tax will not be relevant in this conversation. Yeah. That's good. In Canada, they might as well just take 50% of your paycheck. Yes. So Socialist Republic listen, of Canada. He's not going to Toronto. He's not going to Toronto. Come on. But these are the usual suspects that are on the guys. So, like, listen, we could probably be outbid. But in theory, we could still outbid them. And again, we made a, we increased the offer in both years and time, blah, 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 blah. It, Juan Soto apparently really liked his visit here. And I mean, in, on just surface level, like, why wouldn't he? Boston Red Sox, historical franchise. Uh, you, uh, I mean, Fenway Park. You know the, fa the fans are passionate. Even if they're not showing up, they're passionate. Like, how, that's easy to sell. Especially from, like, he's, yeah. he's Dominican. Mm -hmm. And they sold him on, like, David Ortiz. Pedro Martinez. The legends that played yeah. for the Sox. Manny Ramirez. Yeah. Current players. Brian Bello and Rafi Devers. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, oh, you could be that 3-4 that like <laughs> Manny and Poppy used to be. Yeah, exactly. Devers and Soto. <laughs> oh, that's nice. And like, that is nice. Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 blah. And I, like I said, I'm still, I just cannot help but be a skeptic the last few years. Until something drops, I'm going to be like, well, I'll wait and see. Mm -hmm. um, but they won't stop, Dom. They won't shut up about it. I know. Two of these pitchers, they're going to get two of these pitchers. They mm -hmm. really love Blake Snell. And I know, like, the team has actually looked at Blake, Blake Snell several times over mm -hmm. the year. But again, until you get it, I'm going to be. But man, it's everybody. And it's not just that. It's like Teoscar Hernandez. I see. They I have want, contingency plans. I want Teoscar. I would like Teoscar. I want Teoscar over Soto. Well, that's the one, thing. One, because we already have a bunch of left-handed bats anyway. And also, I just think Teoscar's swing for Fenway is perfect. Could be. He is yeah. a right-handed, high fly ball type home run guy. Mm -hmm. That is awesome for the monster. Sure. But I, the reason I bring up him. And he would be cheaper than Soto, of course. Oh, yes. <laughs> and now I bet John Henry loves that. But the reason I bring him up is because back in the day when we had the Theo Epstein, he would lose out on guys. Mm -hmm. Like, he, you know, we, we have situations of, like, you know, we really actually he went hard after CC Zabathia mm -hmm. back in the day. We didn't get him. But there was a contingency. Oh, right, we got Brad Penny. All right, that's a, that's a very, like, CC's up here, Brad Penny, especially in the twilight, was mm -hmm. way down here. But there was always a contingency plan. Mm -hmm. Heimblum last year lost out on Otani Yamamoto, <laughs> all these guys that they said they were at least going to go after. Mm -hmm. And wound up with nothing. Yeah, there was no, there was no plan. There are. I, I felt that about High Bloom's trade deadline too. Sure, but there are schemes here. There are levels. Mm -hmm. All right, we want Juan Soto, but we have the contingency of Teoscar mm -hmm. Hernandez. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like a Corbin Burns and a let's go with I guess Blake Snell, but we'll settle for the Japanese guy mm -hmm. and Max Fried. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. And if you listen, if we get all, if we settle for everything, mm -hmm. if we don't get Carbon Burns, if we get, if we get the, if we get Max Freed, if it's just Teoscar Hernandez, mm -hmm. I'm, I'll settle. Oh no, I'll, still, I'll, be, I'll be fine that's with a that. Splash in the market. We're back in business. We're, we're actually Those trying. are names. Yeah. I love it. No, I know. I, I, I would be in on that. Again, I don't even really want Soto. I mean, again, if it happened, I want a splash. I, would, I, I would, want a name. I would get, get, I get would, back in the business. I that's get, what I want. That's I, all I want. No, I get you. But I, I would get over it and then be happy about it. But just. From a baseball standpoint, we're ridiculously left-handed. In my perfect Again. world, it's Teoscar Hernandez and Blake Snow. Listen, I, I, I understand what you're saying. 100%. Build the perfect team. I love that. Let's get John Henry just back into spending money. Again, no, I get and then we'll, well, then we'll form a team here. And actually, another reason why I think Juan Soto is interested is because there's a lot of prospects here. There's a lot of young guys that could apparently be the next generation of Red Sox players you could play with. Oh, yeah. That are all over the place. Catchers, outfielders, pitchers. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of to be excited about, actually, if you're a Red Sox fan. In theory, if this offseason goes well. Yeah, if ownership actually commits again. Yeah. But no. there's reason for other players to be excited to come here. Not just Red Sox, Fenway Park, all that stuff. Mm. Oh, man, I would love it. 
I would I love, love it. it. I would love it so much. And I, I would listen. I, especially I, in this day and age where I, you know I'm older, doing better. <laughs> I'm doing better in life. I can enjoy more of the things at Fenway now. It just kind of yeah, sucks yeah. That, that the team has to suck at this point in my life. You can buy a hot dog and a drink. Exactly. <laughs> now, so we can just pay for the nicer seats instead of yeah. moving up. Steel oh, I, no, steel no, one no, no, no. That's I know that, you're that's still, still you're still, still a about, thrill. I know you're still about that life. I am not. That's still even if I as much. That's also, if you take your girl to a game, girls never want to do that. Oh, that's different. Yeah. So, but anyway, they don't want to do the seat jumping, and I get that. No, I know. Anyway, with that though, we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get back into uh, some football talk. I'm going to have some college, and we're also going to rank our teams again: to five best and five worst teams in the NFL right now. Stick with us, guys. And we are back here at Slow Your Roll. Let's talk the New York Giants. We've given them multiple Darwins, I think, over the past year. Um, uh, I don't know about the past year, but they've definitely gotten... Well, they got one for the few. Saquon thing, so the GM is a, oh, dead, yeah. the GM's a dead man walking. Wait. And I don't know what it is with this franchise. I, people have started to come around now and call them as dysfunctional as they are. But for years... Even post Tom Coughlin, all I heard about was that the Jets were a mess, the Jets were a joke, and the Giants were royalty, and they were well run. Mm -hmm. They're not well run. They're just as bad as the Jets. They run through coaches. They run through GMs. Tom Coughlin is a legend. Tom Coughlin should be in the Hall of Fame. Since Tom, it, they've only been good with Coughlin in the last <laughs> 20 years. And the minute they ran Coughlin out of town, they became just as dysfunctional as the Jets. They are awful. They're running through coaches. They're running through quarterbacks. Daniel Jones, nobody thought should be drafted where he was drafted. Not a soul, not a single scout thought he should be drafted there. But the owner was like, well, he reminds me of Eli Manning. So I'm going to draft him. That was it, sixth overall. You know what was great? Uh, Mel Kuyper, when he was drafted, had one of the best breakdowns ever of like, just he's just you can tell he's just trying to be so nice it's like you know david cutliffe says all this nice stuff this 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 and he goes but when i watch the tape i see a, a backup in the nfl <laughs> <laughs> it was just so abrupt after all the nice talk um yeah that's what this franchise does and you know like the benching russell wilson last year because you don't want to pay him the money the benching of Derek carr because you don't want to pay him the money i get that and I understand that, and I will defend that. What I cannot defend, and what the players were clearly pissed about, and they should be, is you spent $5 million on Drew Locke to be the backup. Drew Locke went there because he's like, I have a chance to win the starting job. And then when you bench Jones, you go to the third guy who was on the practice squad because he's a local hero and because you want to lose games so you have a better draft spot. That is losing. That's a losing culture. And if you were a player, like what does that message give to the, to the players, right? Oh, they didn't like it. Oh, I know they didn't. And you could tell they were down, they were down like 20 to nothing to a Bucks team that had lost four or five straight games. Couldn't move the ball at all. Yeah. And I think why? Because they quit. Cause why wouldn't you? You're out there risking it all. You're out there risking injury. Drew Locke is in the same position as some of your other backups. They give him $5 million. He's done everything he could to win the starting job. And then the ownership in the front office is going to do something like that. Like, that's just a big middle finger to your entire locker room. It's a mm. middle finger to all your starters. It's a middle finger to everybody. And they responded in kind on Sunday. Mm. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, you went, you, you benched. Daniel Jones, who is not... Again, again, I understand that. You overpaid him, and he's not worth the contract and <laughs> the money. way overpaid. Yeah, and he's not worth the $21 million you would have to pay in insurance if he got hurt. And you let a guy that got 300 total yards of offense walk because of it mm -hmm. this weekend. I know. It's crazy. And yeah, you benched and him for a guy whose best uh, physical attribute is he's Italian. <laughs> I know. And like I said, just as a player, right, with the way that things are, like Drew Locke has done everything he could to get his chance to try and start in this league again, right? Yeah. And this is a dude we all know can play. Hey, he, he, he finished off a game comeback, game-winning drive last year for the Seahawks. We he know did. he can play. John Schneider of Seattle tried to keep him. 
but the Giants paid more. And then they paid more just to go to Tommy <laughs> yeah. DeVito. Yeah. Like, they are it. every bit as dysfunctional as the Jets. I love it. Every bit as dysfunctional. It's a right now to me, there's the Giants, Jets, and Bears. And we can decide who's the most dysfunctional. I call the Bears the dumbest organization. I call the Jets dysfunctional. Hmm. Now, with Kevin Warren there, and Kevin Warren, you have to answer to Kevin Warren about football stuff. The Bears have entered not only the dumbest, but also the dysfunctional sort of zone. But I don't know if the Giants are one, but they ain't three. <laughs> I mean, there's something in the water of New York right now. I don't know what it is. Because the Jets are dysfunctional. The Giants are dysfunctional. The Mets and Yankees are getting kind of strange. Mm -hmm. hey, the Yankees, listen, the Yankees <laughs> were in the World Series. Should have no reason for no reason. I don't know the American League was down. I mean, that's the reason. It, I know. It was everything about the league was bad and not the Yankees were good. I know. I mean, you, uh, hey, the Mets made the playoffs. The Mets might be getting better. They did. You know? Yeah, it's still a very strange situation for <laughs> it the is. Mets. It is. Like, you're, you you made it to the playoffs on a strange run where Grimace was your uh, mascot. Yeah. And, like Steve Cohen spent like the most money ever in sports only to suck. Yes. And then they cut payroll and now they're good. I know. It makes no sense. I know. New York makes no sense right now. I know. They're, they're having a they're having a rough go of things when it comes to uh yeah. professional sports. I mean the Knicks made the playoffs last year, didn't they? <laughs> they did. So at least there's that. They did. But right now the Giants are they're they're giving those New York Knicks vibes. Old New York Knicks vibes. Oh yeah. Not the new vibes. No, not the new ones. But that that but, is it is hilarious how I mean I you know when the idea is tanking, I get somewhat the logic, but like you, you really trotted a guy out there also, as your week starting 12. QB in week twelve because he relates to the locals <laughs> and because they want to lose. But well, like, yes, but, but again, like you could have done that with Drew Locke. You could have, you could have just, you know. Well, I think Drew Locke would win games. I actually think you could make bad, the argument well, no, that Drew Locke is bad better than Daniel calling. Jones. You can, you can, you can shoot your own team in the foot. Well, yeah, but Dable wants to keep his job, so he's not going to do that. And I thought Dable was safe, but the way that they've responded on Sunday, and it's not Dable's fault. I don't think this is Dable's decision. I would hope not. I, I'm, I'm actually, I would bet all of my money that that was not Dable's decision. That, that is a clear management front office decision. Which is kind of also strange, because like... But at the same time, if they just, and again... If, if, front if, office if, Here's the other thing, right? Lock. If you had done this in week 16 or 17, I would have been a little bit more like... I mean, yes, it's the middle finger, but there's only one more game. Like, okay, it's not. You just this in week twelve. Yeah, there's a month of the season left, and you're asking your guys, who you've literally, basically demonstrated to them that you don't give a shit about the season, to still go out there and put their bodies on the line and play. Now, I wonder how that's going to go. Yeah. I think Dallas beats the snot out of them on Thursday. Probably. Uh, I mean. Listen, the Cowboys yeah. are the Cowboys are bad, but they at least have Marka, Micah Parsons and Bland back. Yeah, like it's made the defense significantly better. Mm -hmm. And say what you want about Cooper Rush, he is a real NFL backup. Tommy DeVito is not. I guess. So I suppose they still got CD Lamb. That might be one of the worst games to watch. Oh, I think it's going to be brutal. If I will you want to watch technically be, sound football, I will be watching it because I have money invested in it. Because this is what you do. But uh, yeah, no, if I didn't. If I didn't, well, if I didn't bet it, I wouldn't watch it. This is this is what I started the show with. Mm -hmm. This stupid crap that has led us to the quality of football has dropped dramatically. Mm. We're dro we're we're trotting out guys for for to tank, mm -hmm. and because he's a local hero. Yeah, <clears throat> I love that. But then, uh, what, why did you sign Drew Locke? Mm -hmm. You outbid someone for him. Mm. I know. I know. I don't. No, you don't really get in bidding wars with backup QBs. Jim Mora. Other um, than not use them at all. Mora has officially taken charge of this organization, is making the decisions. And you know what? I will at least give Mora a pass on why he's making the decisions. Now, he's making the wrong decisions, but I'll at least mm. be like, you know what? He did go into the offseason and he let his GM do what he wanted. He gave him the warning, though. I don't think I can sleep if Saquon goes to Philly. But I hired you to do the job, and I'm going to let you do it. Uh -huh. And, you know, it blew up in the GM's face. And so I at least get more of being like, all right, listen, I let these guys do the job, and they, and they ruined it. So I'm going to do it myself. But, like, you're also making the wrong decisions too, Mora. But, like, of course you're not going to have your GM making decisions. Your GM's a dead man walking. He's done. 
I would be shocked if he was still here next year. I mean, to, to be honest, I wouldn't be shocked if Dabo wasn't either. I wouldn't be I shocked. If, I wouldn't be shocked if Brian wasn't either at this point. And not, I don't think it's Brian's fault. That's and that, I think he should stay. That's a different conversation. I think we're talking about dysfunction. Also, here. just because if you want to draft Shador, right? Don't you think at no. least keeping the head coach is at least a little bit more of a signal to to Shador and Dion of like, listen, we're not that bad. We're, we're being fair to the guy. He got Daniel Jones to the playoffs. Like, <laughs> like I, I as the owner, am acknowledging that I screwed him over. We're not that dysfunctional. We're patient. We're given, you know, you got Brian here, who's who's proven he can work with quarterbacks. Look at Josh Allen. That was him. You know, <laughs> look at Daniel Jones, who made who won a playoff game. That was Brian. He's still here. Like I, I think that's your only pitch. I guess. Because if you fire everyone in the building, unless they've hired Deion Sanders, which also would spell dysfunction to me because he should not be an NFL head coach. But well, I mean, apart from that, I don't. Allegedly, think, the Cowboys I, I, want the same thing. Allegedly, I, I don't believe that though. I believe Jerry wants you to think that because Jerry's all about being in the the news and the headlines he is i i mean i'm not saying you're wrong that's just a weird way to do it i mean there's no other way that they can be relevant right now because they suck uh their quarterbacks lost for the year they're four and seven they're not making the playoffs you just beat a division opponent you, you did you did and one that was supposed to be better than you you yeah i know but they're not that relevant right now i guess unless we want to talk neon sanders <laughs> Because he might coach for Jerry Jones in Dallas. But the Giants suck. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I know Sanders like a year over a year. Maybe I don't really, I don't know exactly he said it. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't want to coach in the NFL. Yeah, he did say that. I mean, these rumors are swirling. He's not obligated to come on and be like, come on, no. But he's not squashed them in any way. Now, maybe he doesn't care. Like, I'm not going to bother. Maybe. But he's not silenced them. But kind of like Jerry, what I was just talking about. He likes to have his name in the news? Yes. And I don't mean just selfishly. I, it's good for his program. Any, any not way. If, not when the news is he might leave. But that's going to be the news anyway. That's always going to be the news no matter what. We might as well just make it as big as possible. Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> meet with Jerry Jones. Have Jerry Jones meet the Colorado players. Like, I, I'm just, it's, the more they, Colorado, the more Dion can make Colorado a circus. In a way, it's actually better for them. Because uh, apart from that, they would have no ability to recruit at all. I mean, I get that. Like Colorado, it's, you sold your soul but, for this. You have to just like you made your bed lie. No, you. I get that. But like when the if the news is then because how many people? Yes, but jump. But, but there's always to be but, with. But, but my point is, there's always going to be talk about him leaving. That's never going to change. So uh, instead of having it be boring, instead of having it be like, well, he, you know, he might just go take that Florida Gators job, you know. Well. Texas Tech might give him a call. Like, listen, if, if, if this is going to be the conversation anyway, let's just go big. Well, let's just throw Dallas Cowboys out there all well, the time. You could then still help your recruiting with that news by coming out and saying, that news is totally wrong. I'm sticking in Colorado. I want that next generation of kids coming through Colorado. Yeah, we'll see. And then your name is still in the news. Right now, it's not hurting his recruiting. So, do we know this? Yes, I know it. How do we know this? Because I, I they just signed a four star guy. Which Colorado never gets four star guys, except for now. So it's not hurting their recruiting yet. I mean, I couldn't. And with the transfer, like with, with the transfer portal in college now, where it's so easy, you can just leave whenever you want. I guess. Like it doesn't matter for these kids. I guess. I'm going to go there. I'm going to roll the dice that he's still going to be there next year. And if he's not, oh, whoop de doo. I just put my name in that transfer portal. Like, like I, mean, I can be on another campus a week later. Like it's not. It's nothing. It's these, nothing to them. Do the recruits have agents now? Uh, uh, the big ones do, yes. Okay, the big recruits do? Yeah, they do. Because I know, like, the, the big names in college. Yeah, do. like Bryce Underwood ha has one. Okay. I uh, mean, I figured they would. So I, I would assume oh, these, yeah. these recruits would ask that question. Yeah. Hey, some people think you want to go to Dallas. Mm -hmm. I'd li I would like my yeah, clients you, you here. You know, that's a good point, right? It stays in the headlines, but how do we know, again, with, with the way things are, these high school kids, if you're a high-level prospect, if you're an upper echelon, four-star, five-star guy, you are in the know about things in a way you never were before. Like, you have agents. Like, Dion might secretly just be telling 
their agents and their recruits. Like, relax. This is just good for the brand. But maybe I'm here another year. Or I'm not going to the NFL. You know what I mean? Like, maybe. We don't know that, like, the back channel, he's, he's making this well-known. Because, again, it's not hurting his recruiting right now. So makes me think that that's a good point. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe they're going through the agents and stuff. Well, I would hope the agents would at least ask that question. <laughs> no, I would hope so, too. smart enough to ask that question. Uh, yeah. All right. Moving on. Jesse, you can take a break for a minute. Thanks. <clears throat> on a few things. I'll actually, for the second one, I'll be able to tie you into it for a second. But, um, so, crazy week in college football. Again, Bama goes down, uh, losing to an unranked Oklahoma team in Norman that was a absolute mess before this didn't even score an offensive touchdown and old miss goes down at least in the swamp in florida to a very talented though underachieving early in the year florida gator team and these are not the same they are not the same situations at all i'll explain why and i will take a victory lap kaylin DeBoer took over a roster from nick saban back-to-back -back number one recruiting classes from nick saban an experienced quarterback who had been in the college playoff the year before, and in one season has taken that Lamborghini, the keys he was given, and drove it into a tree. They got three losses. It's a 12-team playoff. A 12-team playoff. And he's not going to make it with an experienced quarterback, an experienced offensive line, a D-line that most of them returned. He had a few transfers. Guys transfer out. That is true. But he had a number one recruiting class that Saban had brought in two years ago waiting in the wings behind it if they weren't already starting. This is inexcusable. But this is exactly what I thought would happen. Because, first off, you're never going to go from Nick Saban to somebody else and not have a drop-off. But Kalen DeBoer has never fit the SEC culture. Kalen DeBoer has never coached in a situation as tough week in and week out as the SEC. So, yes, he can game script and game plan beautifully in the first half in these big games. But week to week, somebody told Kalen DeBoer, someone forgot to tell Kalen DeBoer, he ain't going to be playing, you know, the freaking school of the blind every other week before every big game. He's not going to be playing nobody. He's not going to be playing Washington State and Oregon State and, you know, all these schools that suck and aren't even that committed. You don't get Cal and Stanford on the schedule anymore. Yes, you did a good job beating Georgia. Guess what? Go play at Tennessee in front of another 90,000 people screaming their heads off in a night game, right? It's not the same thing anymore, Kalen. You gotta be locked in week in and week out. There's no more gimmies on the schedule anymore. You're not on the West Coast. So, Kalen DeBoer has, was given the keys to a Lambo and he's crashed it, drove it, off the cliff, into a tree, whatever analogy you want to say. It's hilarious. Bama is burning. The recruiting's not going to be as good. He will be a failure at Alabama. He's already failed his first season when he was given the best roster he's ever coached. The best court, well, Penix was better. The second best quarterback he's ever coached in his life who had already been in the playoffs. Failure in Tuscaloosa, Alabama by Kalen DeBoer. To old Miss, Lane Kiffin who was a trendy pick to make the playoffs and probably you could make the argument should have made the playoffs. He had enough returning players, but this is why this situation is not the same. And this is why if LSU has a job opening or any other big school in the sec, or even in the big 10 lane Kiffin should be on the top of your list of who you want to hire because he is still by all metrics overachieving at old miss. So old miss, in 2023, ranked 10th in recruiting. Not in the nation, just 10th in the SEC. Notable teams ahead of them. Arkansas, who's not even good. Florida and South Carolina, all ranking ahead of Old Miss in 2023. In 2022, the recruiting class Old Miss brought in was 12th, again, in the SEC. Missouri was over them. Kentucky had a better recruiting class. South Carolina had a better recruiting class. In 2021, they had their best finish in the last four years. They did finish sixth in recruiting in the SEC. However, most of that was because they just signed an ungodly amount of three-star guys. They only had six or seven four-star guys. 
uh, in 2020, they had 12th in SEC recruiting, and in 2019, they were ninth in SEC recruiting. This job does not get great recruits, and yet Lane Kiffin has found himself in the upper echelon of the SEC year in and year out. So no matter what you think about this year, and he has done well in the transfer portal, but there's a reason some guys are transferring and you only get a couple, like, what do you get, two or three starters at most usually in your transfer portal? Um, it's still, you got to do it with the recruiting. That's where it starts. Um, so by all metrics, despite what you think about this year, despite the fact you think it might be a disappointment, Jackson Dart, a lot of returning guys, you thought you should have made the playoff, and maybe you should have because it is 12 team, but by all metrics, he's still overachieving at Ole Miss. So that's, I mean, he, and by the way, no one's talking about Lane Kiffin. Like, other than your average really dumb guy on Twitter, which I got to stop going on Twitter, honestly, on NFL Sundays and stuff. It's, it's honestly starting to annoy me. Why? Because people, because fans are so stupid. I love to laugh at them. <sighs> they're so funny on I Sunday. mean, sometimes they're funny, but sometimes it just gets annoying. I mean, I get annoyed at, like, Patriots fans and all there because they're wrong about everything. Yeah. But, like, but they talk eight days a week. <clears throat> I know. But, anyway, so that's Old Miss, relax, SEC people, relax. If you have a job opening, Lane Kiffin should be maybe your first call still. All right. From that, I want to talk the SEC in general, the 12-team playoff. And I had an epiphany last night. I mean, on Saturday, watching that game. A eureka moment. Now, we all know the SEC is better than everybody else. Like, they have the best recruit, blah, 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 blah. I think it's pretty hard to argue. I think you have to be a pretty dumb, low IQ, strident Big Ten fan to try and argue that they're not better. But I still think they don't understand just how big the gap is. And then the gap is probably bigger this year than it has been in other years. Because in the Big Ten, if Michigan is going to suck, and USC is going to suck, your conference blows. It's terrible. Like, you're kind of comparable with the ACC in a lot of ways. Hell, maybe you're comparable in the Big 12 with at least the bottom of your conference. Now, Oregon and Ohio State are as good as anybody in the country. You can stack them up against some of the best teams in the SEC, and it'll be a great game, and Ohio State could beat a lot of them, and Ohio State might win a national championship. But outside of those two teams, the Big 10 sucks. Indiana played nobody, and the minute they faced one good team, Ohio State, they were revealed as a fraud. And yet, just because of record alone, they're going to make the playoff, probably over an Old Miss, an LSU, an Alabama, which my problems with DeBoer, and I think it's hilarious, and I'm laughing that Bama's not going to make the playoff, but it is comical that Indiana is going to be in the playoff and not Alabama. That's ridiculous. And this is why I think the 12 team playoff is so stupid, even though it was probably necessary for the sport. Um, but the way it's done is really dumb. Because at least when it was only four teams, when it was only four teams, it was, we could argue Big Ten, SEC, oh, the schedule, blah, blah, blah. But when it was only four teams, listen, we know it's pretty clear to see when it's that exclusive who's in that window and who's not. And usually most of the teams that made it were undefeated anyway. And undefeated in Power 5 conferences, it usually had two SEC teams that were clearly the best teams in the SEC. You had an Ohio State, you had an Oregon, you had a, ones that are at least complete on the national level. So there wasn't much arguing, even if you thought this team played a harder schedule. They were just in a different class when we're only doing four teams. When you're doing 12 teams, it's kind of ridiculous. And you get teams that are going to be 10-1 and one, like Indiana, who didn't play anybody over teams that if you just objectively watch the games, they're not as talented. They're not as talented as Florida. They're not as talented as Auburn. They're not even in the same class as Alabama or Old Miss or Georgia or Texas. Hell, I think Oklahoma, as awful as they've been this year, you watch them against Bama on Saturday, has more NFL guys, particularly on defense, than Indiana. I would wager Oklahoma's starting defensive unit has more NFL players than a single player at Indiana. And I would also wager that Auburn and Florida have more NFL players on it than USC does this year. So it's just ridiculous. It's comical. And the way you can know this kind of stuff and how dumb it is, 
is, Jesse, this is why I'm gonna bring you in for a second. I talked about this with, I'm not gonna get political, just I'm talking about this with the election, right? Vegas doesn't have an agenda. The only thing Vegas cares about is getting it right and making money. Two weeks before the election, Trump had gone to a minus 190 favorite. That's all Vegas cares about, is getting it right and making money. Especially when it comes to college football where no one plays the same schedule and you can have ridiculousness where teams can be 11-0 and 0 and not be actually that good. Vegas should always be the truth serum. Vegas comes out with their only top 25, right? Guess who's not even in the top 25 in Vegas' thing? Indiana's not on it. The Big Ten has three teams in it. Penn State, Ohio State, and Oregon. And by the way, Penn State's not in the top 10. I believe when I made some calls and talked to people, I think in the Vegas, Vegas' own top 25, I think they had Penn State ranked 14th or 15th. Now, I'm, you can't relate it to college, but it, you're, you can relate at least what I'm talking about, about Truth Serum and like Vegas. I mean, sure. Like I that's think, the go-to. I think Vegas tries to get it right. I just don't know if they always... Well, listen, no, no. one's going to get it right. But what I'm talking about is <clears throat> they're agenda-free. Their only agenda is making money. Like if you want the Truth Serum about something in sports, you, think, yeah. you go to Vegas and clearly in politics too. Yeah. Because we live in Massachusetts, which is as blue as it gets, and all you could hear about was how Kamala was going to destroy Trump in the election. But if you looked at Vegas, who only cares about just getting right and making it money, they were telling you. And I know yeah. you said they got it wrong in 2020, but 2020 is an well, outlier for everything. My, my not a single quarterback hit. Well, not a, <laughs> my point with that was like, you know, does... Vegas wants to get it right, but do they always know? No, they don't always like, know. Hockey, they're not actually very good. Hockey it is, seems. I feel like hockey is one of the more mad sports in the world, though. Yes. Whereas, like, you tell me, like, teams come back from down 3-0. The President's Cup trophy winner seems to get bounced in the first round every single time. Yes. <laughs> but like, that's the thing. Like, hockey's madness. Yes. But there still is, like, you know, trends, and I feel like Vegas is not... No, I get you. And I, I get why. You know, Vegas is in America. It's in the desert of America. Like, I'm sure they were never that interested in hockey. Mm -hmm. And probably have growing more and more as it grows in America. But my point was just like, <clears throat> Vegas, you're right. Mm -hmm. Wants to get it right. Their only idea is get it right, get the money. Mm -hmm. Just how much are they in the know? Yeah. No, I get you. But yeah, th this is just, I want everyone to just watch the games and shut up. <laughs> if you watch Auburn play... The team speed, and they're not even good. They're, they're going to win six games. They're struggling to win games in the SEC. But if you sit down and watch the game, watch their team speed, particularly on defense, and go watch somebody who's 7-5 and five in the Big Ten or 7-5 and five in, the SC, uh, in the ACC or in the Big 12, the gap between them is freaking massive. It's not close. And that's why these conversations are so stupid. If we're really going to be objectively honest with ourselves and try and put the 12 best teams in the playoff, the SEC should probably have six of them. Because you can be five and seven in the SEC and you're better than 90% of the teams in the other conferences. Do you know right now if Penn State, who only has one loss this year to Ohio State, played on a neutral field against Old Miss, who has three losses now, Old Miss would be favored. Hell, if they played on a neutral field against Florida, there would be a good amount of sharp money that would come in on Florida, and they've won like five games. That's the talent discrepancy, and that's why this is so dumb, the way we're doing this 12-team playoff. It's ridiculous. And shut up. Agenda aside, I wasn't born in the South. I wasn't born an SEC guy. I used to crap on him. But... I've been down there. I've seen it. I watch the games with a better eye now. It's not close. Go look at NFL recruiting. Go look at the draft. They're all SEC guys. Stupid. I just think in general I don't like playoff expansion. No, I don't. I, sp oh, I hate it. I hate it in pro sports. Yeah, I don't. I didn't. We like do not need a third wild card team in baseball. It's so dumb. Oh, I didn't like it when they did that one wild card game. The well, that was always dumb to me simply from a standpoint of baseball is the game of, like, 162, and now we're going to be like, yo, 
<laughs> one game decides it all. Well, I also, I just didn't want any. And also, you could have one wild card team that won like 94 games, another one that 85. No. And Baseball was perfectly set up for the playoff structure. I think it was. Three too. divisions, three division winners get in and one wild card team. I know. But the problem was that sometimes it made people check out earlier in the regular season. I get the adding one wild card team. But I would have done it where they had to play a three-game series against each other, and all three games were at mm -hmm. home for the team that won the most games. The only real baseball playoff expansion I wanted was the division series to go from five games to six. Or, excuse me, seven. Oh, okay. I get you. Have a, you know, it's weird that they have unequal series lengths. Yeah, I understand that. Made it's even a, it's worse. A, it's a bit odd. Made even worse by the two out of three wild card round. Yeah, it is a bit odd. I hated when football added an extra... And it was one, just one extra playoff team in each league mm -hmm. for each conference. Yeah. Uh, thank God. The, it the is NBA so and NHL. dumb because that last playoff team is always has no business being there. Yeah. Every year. And I, I also don't like it that they took away a bye because it used to be two teams with a bye. Mm -hmm. I feel like having one team with a bye, that's a real advantage for one team. Oh, yeah. And I get it. You fight all year long to be that number one team. But like home field advantage is the advantage. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. God the NHL and NBA have not talked about playoff expansion. Bro, the NBA should minimize their playoffs because the NBA every year, we know there's only like two teams that can win the championship. I mean, I know why these leagues do it. Yeah, well, more, pe more people watch, more people spend well, yeah, money. It keeps more. people engaged in the regular season longer. Well, it's also more money is made on postseason games than a regular season game. And if you can have more postseason games, you'll make true. more money. True, true, true. So I get it. I mean, in theory, that's also true because even though, even though more no, people will stay engaged longer in the regular season. Even though nobody watches the first round of the NBA playoffs. <laughs> no. They don't. No. I've seen, I've, seen the, I've seen the numbers. At least there's parity in NHL where the eight team can beat the one. We saw it two years ago. Oh, I agree. Anyway. All right, Jesse. Hey. We're not, we're not these shows that do these every week because they're stupid. That is stupid. It is dumb. You can't, this is, you can't just judge everything week to week in the NFL. This is a crazy league. Anyone can beat anybody. We I'm do down. this about three times during the regular season. I'm down for the power rankings, though. Like, you know, the 1 to 32, a power ranking of just how the NHL views or the NFL views. Okay, that's fine. But like, but like these shows that but, try and do rankings. But a sitting week, down and dumb. discussion of these are the five best, these are the five worst. That's every, just a, every week. It's just a list of the 32 and how they're perceived as yes. better than the other. That's, that's it's slightly different. But it's time for our second time of the year to sit down and do our rankings, the five best and five worst teams in the NFL. I'll tell you, there has been a serious shakeup. Especially at the bottom. When we when we first did this, when we first did this, I was like, I don't think I've ever seen the bottom of the league this bad. A couple of them have gotten together. It's not as putrid as it was before. Although some of them have fallen apart. Uh, a few of them have. But anyway, you were actually supposed to start this segment, but it is what it is. Jesse, I mean, I can give my you list go first. first. Do you want me to do top five first? Yeah, let's go. Let's go top five. Okay. We always save the worst ones for the latter because okay. it's funny. It's, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of funnier. It is. Uh, so my fifth best team in the NH, and I keep saying NH, NFL, the NFL, the National Football League, the fifth best team. I hate it. It's the Eagles. They've won seven straight, and although I've not been very convinced in those I have seven, them, I have them way higher. Oh, you have them higher. I have not even been convinced in these really seven straight wins that they've been all that great. I feel like it's a lot of Saquon Barkley, and yes, getting AJ Brown back is very nice. But, like, I still – they're not blowing out these teams. They look good this week. But, like, for the most part, it's a lot of what I saw last year of, like, yes, you're better than these teams, but, man, you really – like the Steelers. You really play down to your competition, son. Well, Pittsburgh is not explosive enough on offense to blow teams out. Well, I'm saying historically. Okay. That's been the Pittsburgh thing. That's okay. been the Steelers' yeah, I, identity. I, 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 and Philly has that identity right now. They play down to their competition. And that's that's always that's always shaky to me. And again, other than Saquon Barkley, I'm not really that impressed with anything. Okay. I've seen AJ Brown. I'm I've been impressed with him years ago. I'm not that impressed now. Okay. <clears throat> number four, which was was my number one last time we did this, the Kansas City Chiefs. Still way too good to not be the top five. But again, nothing about him is actually really <sighs> So much better than everybody else. 
there it's the X's and O's stuff. Situational football. The fundamentals that really keeps them again winning eight one score games this year. It's clearly something they're good at. And it's it's just X's and O's, well coached, play a clean game. I like your odds if you play a clean game. And that's that's what they play. But that's not that's not best in the league. Yeah. And the biggest thing is them is they struggle to score twenty points. Yeah. The so, defense is still good. Actually, so, so if you face an offense that's explosive enough that you're not going to hold them down, they're going to be in trouble. I think their best player this year has been Chris Jones. And although he is an elite player, I think if you are the Kansas City Chiefs, me saying that is a little concerning because of who your quarterback is, who your, who your talent pool on offense is supposed to be. I understand that the, the injuries are playing a role in this, but still, this is where we are. Number three is the Baltimore Ravens. I don't want them even on this list somewhat. Because of Lamar, you know, Derrick Henry's still playing well, but, like, you know, teams are starting to, like, really hone in on him, stop him, you stop the Ravens. But, damn, they're just still so talented. And going up against a well-coached team last night, they really showed that, man, they're just so talented still. And it's well-coached, good XO team themselves. I, I think they're just too talented right now. I know the defense is very sus. Explosive on offense. But, Extremely. Yes. It's just it's it's too talented. They're too well coached for the the things I'm seeing that trouble me to to bump them down in this list. Okay. And number two is the Detroit Lions. They could be one. They could be, but there's one team that's better than them. Oh, okay. Because I mean, it's still Jared Goff. Oh. They still suss a little bit. Wow. Without Hendrickson uh, on that defense, it does. It's still good. Hutchinson. See, so yeah, Hutchinson, not Hendrickson. Hendrickson's on um, Cincy. Cincy. Uh, yeah, without Hutchinson, it makes that defense a little bit, a little sus. You know, we, we've said, like, you know, the, the secondary is fine. It's suitable. And it was helped so much by Hendrickson really shortening that clock. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they still played well. Smash it. I mean, they smashed the bad teams. I really want to see them go against more of these good teams. To really put him at number one, because number one is the Buffalo Bills. Mm. Josh Allen. Mm. This is not the best talent they've put on the field, but it's it's the most mature they've been. It's the most stable, stable, start, stable they've been. It's the smartest team they've had on the field. It, it's the most all around offense they've had on the field, <coughs> despite not having digs. They have a run game. They have tight ends. They have wide receivers, even if none of them are really elite, explosive guys. So they have a plethora of guys that can get it done. And the defense is still really good, despite losing a whole bunch of guys. And although Sean McDermott scares me uh, in the playoffs, this is not playoffs. They are the best regular season team. Okay. All right. um, so we have the same five teams, just in different order. I figured it'd be the same five teams. So at five, I have the Baltimore Ravens. <clears throat> Listen, the secondary is not very good. They can look like the greatest team in football. The problem is that their lows are awful. Like, losing games where you don't score offensive touchdowns against the Steelers. What the hell was the Raiders game? Like, Lamar, when, when he's off, is awful. <laughs> and unlike the Lions, who I have much higher, of course, when Goff is off, their offensive weaponry and then their offensive line and the ability to run the ball doesn't matter. They can still win the game even if Goff is off. The lows of Baltimore are really, really bad. And that's why I have them fifth. And obviously, then there's a unit on the team that I think is really awful. Uh, there's a unit on this team, Baltimore, that I think is a worse unit than any of the four teams ahead of them. And that is the Baltimore secondary is not good. It's not. And it played better last night because the Chargers lost J.K. Dobbins. And Quentin Johnson can't catch a cold. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's where I have Baltimore all the way at five. Uh, four, I have the Chiefs. They, they struggle to score 20 points. Um, this is not a reaction to the Carolina game. I, like, Casey plays with their food a bit. They feel almost a little NBA-ish where they kind of want to hold back in the regular season and not throw everything out. Like, they're trying to hide stuff. But they are trying to figure out their offensive identity. We know the defense is good. Not quite as dominant as it was last year, though, but it is still very good, one of the better ones in the league. But simply, they struggle to score 20 points. And when you face a team like the Lions or the Eagles, or the Bills, it doesn't matter how good your defense is, they're going to put up points. So they will struggle to be in those games because they simply just cannot, they can't play a track meet. Even if it's only a track meet for a quarter, all it takes is one big quarter 
and they can be in a lot of trouble. Because like I said, like, apart from Carolina, who sucks that they put up 30 points, they're struggling to put up 20 points on anybody. So can, I, can I stop you and ask you a question? Okay. Yeah. I know you put, you, you put KC ahead of Baltimore, but mm-hmm. if they met in playoffs... I would go with KC. Because even the, if because the lows the, air raid. the lows of Baltimore are so low that I just I can't trust them. But I can trust Kansas City situationally. I can't trust Lamar. I can't trust Baltimore. But it's not been the 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 Patrick Mahomes show just carving up defenses, throwing all the ball down the field. It's I know. Even when they've tried to do that, it's not been obviously. I, you know, I know, but Lamar gets tight. Lamar turns the football over too much. You know. But if you can just... If it's a close game, do I trust the secondary? You can, but do I trust the Baltimore secondary to not do something stupid at the end of a game and give up a cheap touchdown? I don't. Mm. That's why. Mm. Okay. It's stable. The same reason that we have Buffalo higher than we ever have before, even though we think they've been more talented, stability. The Ravens are not stable. Okay. Um, So third, I have the Bills. Whoa. Yeah, I think the two teams in the NFC are better. Um, Listen... Everything you said, there's not much more I can get into it. This is the most stable they've been. This is the best they've been. They're the best team in the AFC. But number two, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't trust Sirianni. I don't love him. But it's not even Saquon. You're making it about Saquon for the offense, and it is about Saquon for the offense. But this defense, I think, is more of the reason why I have them as high as they have. It was bad early on. Shocker. It took Vic Fangio with a new system a few weeks to get it implemented. Now you see the talent on the defensive front. To me, they're the only team in the NFL who can match up with the Lions. They are the Lions kryptonite. I'd still pick Detroit, but I think they're the only team that can match up with them. And Saquon's brilliant. I'm making it more about the defense. This is a defensive story to me, more than everything else. They have two of some of the best coordinators in football. We know they're super talented. They figured out how to play with Jalen Hurts. They can run the football with Saquon, and their D-line is dominant. And number one, I have the Lions. I mean, Jared Goff threw like six picks in a game and they won. <laughs> yeah. Their offensive line is the <laughs> ultimate trump card in a league that's gotten less physical and the line play has gotten worse, particularly on the offensive line. They have two running backs. They have a explosive down-the-field wide receiver and one of the best possession receivers short yards in the game in Amon Ross St. Brown. They simply have everything. Now, <coughs> pass rush, not as good as it was. They're figuring it out, though. It hasn't gone off the cliff the same way I thought it would. I feel like the competition and the corner has signi- the corners have significantly gotten better than they were last year, and particularly two years ago, of course. Hmm. So Detroit, to me, is the best team in football. They've had some if easy Goff goals is, the last few weeks. If though. Goff is off, yeah, but they're doing stuff that teams don't do in the NFL, but not these kind of points. Yeah, like having <clears> and I thought this spot. Like, run by the way, the I thought this. Quarter. I thought this spot against Indy. I put a. And this was my bye week for the most part when it came to betting. But I loved Indy plus seven and a half. And Detroit didn't even play well and still covered. They did not play well in that game. Didn't matter. They're just, they, no matter what goes on, they can win in so many ways and in so many scenarios. So I think they're clearly the best team in football. Philly's the only one that's close right now. I don't think Philly's that good. I know you don't. Why? Uh, is it co- but is it coaching or is it the roster? I mean, a little bit of both, mostly the coaching. Exactly. Sirianni, but like... I don't like the head coach close game decision-making, but I love their coordinators, and we know that the roster has a, a ton of talent on it. I, I still don't like Jalen Hurts. Okay. Not to be a hater, but like he's a very limited quarterback. He can be. I, you know, they're talented, but... Uh, okay. Especially like a heavy reliance on Saquon. Like, <clears throat> I don't want to be that guy, but if he goes down, like... That's true, but right I now he's this offense okay, will dry he, he true, but he's not down yet. I guess this is right now. All right, he's healthy right now. We don't we don't we don't assume he looks healthy. He we does. don't we don't assume for injuries that haven't happened yet. Mm. We only do that when it comes to futures bets on the season. That's why I had Dallas so downgraded because he only got three good players. So I was like, one of you's <laughs> got to get hurt. And it ended up two of them. But anyway, all right. Now the fun times. Time to make fun of some teams. The five worst. I'll start. And this is where there might be more parity. Probably. At number five, I have the Dallas Cowboys. Now they got Bland. Parody, we have parity. We have Bland and Micah Parsons who came back, so they're not as bad as they were. Cooper Rush is a low end, even backup, but he is at least a real backup. Um, but he's the less, they're not good. They're not good. They have one wide receiver. The running back group's not great. The offensive line's not what it used to be. Yeah. 
And they'd be higher on this list, except with Micah and Bland back, they at least are a functional defense again. Whereas actually, they were one of the worst in the league when, while they were out. They're, and actually, they're not on my list. Oh, really? Wow. They would be like six, though. So they were um, debated. At number four, I have the Carolina Panthers. They have showed a life. Canales has figured some things out. They have Bryce Young playing at least more confidently and cleanly. They still run the fo- Listen, they were able to run the football at least decent on the Chiefs front, and that's one of the better defensive fronts in football. Um, Chuba, they found a wide receiver with Leggett. And again, they're just playing cleaner football. The defense is still bad, but they can play clean football. They can keep Bryce Young upright, and they can run the ball to at least limit possessions and shorten the game and shorten the clock. They're not as bad as they were. They're still bad. Not as bad as they were. Uh, at three, I have the Jaguars. Listen, mm. they're number one if, I, if Lawrence wasn't about to come back this week. Because if Mac Jones is under center, you're the worst team. Um, listen, I think they're poorly coached. I think the coaching staff knows they're done. I think the players knows the coaching staff is done. Brian Thomas has been banged up. He was their best weapon on offense. Kirk's been gone all year. The running back room, ETN, was like lost his job. I don't know. Tank Bigsby's the guy. I, I don't know what's going on there. But they're just bad. They're just bad everywhere. Uh, number two, I have the Raiders. Maybe the p- worst coach team in the league right now. I, Jets are probably the worst coach, but still. I got the Raiders. Um, I see now that I don't have the Jets on my list, which is, you know, I don't know. I think they're the worst coach, but are they as bad as these teams? They shouldn't be. So that's why they're not on the list. Um, but the Raiders are awful. And... Good for them. They did try against Denver. They pushed back a little bit. But uh, Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell, that's pretty awful. They're not well coached. Their run game, pretty pretty inconsistent. They've gone through like three different running backs. Uh, their wide receiver is let's just feed the ball to Jacoby Myers because there's nobody else who can catch passes. And then number one's the New York Giants. Hmm. I think their players are quitting, and it's only week 12. Tommy DeVito is your starting quarterback. I don't know what more I'm supposed to say. They are awful. <laughs> We have some differences. Okay, good. We have some similarities. We have some differences. Actually, I have two teams that you don't have. Okay. We'll start. Number five. Let's go. The New York Jets. Okay. That's tough for me to argue. You know, because you said it in like, oh, they really shouldn't be on here. And they shouldn't. And that's part of the reason why they are. Coming into the season. Yeah, they might be the worst coach. I was hugely skeptical. But coming into the season, Vegas had them at like, what, 10 wins? Uh, Nine and a half. Okay. All right. Whatever it was in that it was in that range. Yeah. And then like, other people are still like, oh, okay, slow start, it's fine. Now they got Devonte Adams. Uh, yeah. They'll be great. They'll turn it on now. It's like they are getting worse and worse. The more they get what they want, Salah's out. Devonte Adams is in. It get just it gets worse. I know. They're going. They're number five. Okay. Partly because, I mean, you know, talk about Aaron Rodgers being benched now, and partly because they like, you if you look at the roster. You shouldn't be anywhere near this list, Mm -hmm. but you are. Number four is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Pretty much everything you said. Mm -hmm. They suck. They're bad at everything. Pretty much bad at everything. They suck. I still think, number three, though, the New England Patriots are worse. Wow. I mean, I know we lost to them. That was a Lawrence run team. You have the Pats in the top five right now. I do. Just because we got blown out by Miami? It, They've it, been playing decent it, football before that. Yes, but we got blown out by Miami. And I know, like I said, it's written into the cosmos. We lose in Miami. We just do. No, it doesn't matter if it's Brady or Belichick or otherwise. We lose in Miami. Especially, we lose to Tua as well. Like, we don't beat Tua Tagovailoa. We just don't. But after weeks of progression, only to see, like, oh, all of those bad habits are still right under the surface for both players, coaches, and everybody, mm. it's, it's still really bad. Okay. I saw, you know, I like Drake May. I like the progress. I don't blame yesterday on Drake May, but it got so bad yesterday. I saw some of those old habits from Drake May, the, oh, yeah. feet, the feet stuff. The turnovers. The yes. So we, we've once again headed in the wrong direction. We're back in the top. I five. think it's wild that you have us worse than the Jaguars. If we did this a week ago, New England wouldn't even be in the top five. Top okay. five worst. But that was, that was really, really bad. Okay. And then I have Vegas, basically everything you said. Okay. I don't care. Like, you played hard yesterday. It's division game. Like, mm-hmm. those, even if the discrepancy is huge, they generally just don't end in blowouts for division games. They just mm-hmm. don't. Unless it's like Tom Brady. But he's, he's an outlier in every sense of the word. And then New York Giants. Mm-hmm. They suck. Yeah, they, they, they suck. I think they're quitting. 
They're, they're they look like they quit on Sunday. They're losers. Like I said, Baker, I mean, the Bucks had lost four straight games, and they were up like 24 to nothing in the first half. Like, it was over fast. Yeah. yeah. You could tell, the, like, halfway through the game, like, guys aren't hitting that hard. Guys aren't pursuing. Like, <laughs> bad as it gets. So, all right. That's been the top five. I still can't believe. I can't believe you have the Pats in there. They, yeah, they, that was really bad. So, would you not have the Cowboys in there, not just because they won, but because they have Micah and Plan back? Which I understand. I mean, yeah. Because I do think they're a different defense with that. Without them, they were one of the worst defenses in the NFL. I mean, they tried real hard to blow that game mm -hmm. on Sunday. Man, did they try hard. Yes. But the uh, special teams play. I know. Special teams play across Which the league actually, has been a mess. They still almost screwed that up because he should have the, the onside kick where he ran back into the end zone. Yeah, he should have gone down. He should have gone down. I know. And like, I mean, dude. Well, coach, well, coach play would have done, gone down. No, I know. But all right, with that, we are getting ready to finish things up. Jesse, you're announcing the Darwin, right? Wait, is it mine? Yeah, isn't it? It's not Pepper's? Is it? Oh, wait, that was a joke. Oh. I wasn't going to. Did we actually do that? Why? Well, one, because he's not actually cleared legally. <laughs> oh, okay. But like the league saw it and was like, he's going to get cleared legally. Okay. All right, we, we got to call an audible here real quick. Well, then. you had one. I know, but I forget what it was. It was the... Wait, 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 wait. Let me look. Let me look. Calling an audible. I literally actually just said it a second ago. I know. I said what your idea was a second ago. Wow. Oh, yes. I know what it is. Yeah. Drum roll, please. <laughs> this week's Darwin Award winner is the Washington Commanders, particularly what I mean, the special teams. Hmm. Listen, we don't usually like to give in-game unless it was a really dumb coaching decision. This is the worst special teams. And by the way, it's funny because the game started with the Cowboys being awful on special teams. And I remember <coughs> my brother texting me that uh, the former Patriots player, Larry Izzo, is their special teams coach. I was like, oh, he's doing a really good job. Boy, did I talk way too early. <laughs> because after that, they allowed a kick return for a touchdown. They missed an extra point. They had an onside kick return for a touchdown. Though he should have gone down, but they still allowed him to return yes. for a touchdown. Yes. And also, did, did they miss two extra points or did he miss one extra point in the field goal? It was two extra points. Oh, one extra point field goal. Okay. So he missed an extra point in the field goal. They allowed a kick return for a touchdown and an onside kick return for a touchdown. As bad as it possibly gets and at the worst times. Like, yeah. I, listen, I, again, we don't like to give it in-game stuff usually unless it's a really dumb coaching decision. But when you screw up simple stuff that much – that late in the game too and you get your miracle your miracle 84 yard touchdown on a yeah. play where all you have to do is just keep everybody in front of you and tackle them and then proceed to miss the extra point after yeah. that yeah the i mean ultimate just kick in the nuts congratulations to the washington special teams i, I did have that that thought of like what if he misses this <laughs> and then i saw the snap was bad it was. It was a bad snap. And Which, like, by the way, more reason to give it to the special teams because it's not even like I'm just giving it to the kicker. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. It was no, an no. extra point. No, no, your, no. your snap was terrible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They messed it up. <laughs> but, like, I... As I, a unit, they just messed it all up. The thought finished in my head and the snap, like, bounced. And I was like, <laughs> oh. And then he pulled it. I Which, again, I don't blame the kicker. Snap, yeah. snap bad makes hold bad. Uh, on an extra point, I, I still expect you to be able to get it. They're not as automatic on a normal as they used to be. on a normal field goal. I get it. Like everything has to go right. This is a 38, 40 something yarder. Like, but extra point. Like, uh, even if you're a little off, you should be able to make that still. I mean, uh, I know they're not as easy as they used to be, but they still should be pretty easy. If the hole, if the, the hold is bad enough, there's not much the kicker can do. It was bad, but he still was able to at least get it up in a position to kick. I guess. I guess. Now, if he never gets that football up and the guy like literally stops and then has to do it, like, okay. Mm. But it was just a half second of like adjusting, and maybe the kicker saw it and freaked out in his mind a little bit. But it was not a situation where I saw I the mean, kicker completely have to stop his stride and everything. I do, um, I do assume a lot of these kickers. I mean, it is. I mean, we know it's a mind game with mm -hmm. a position like that. Mm -hmm. But I do assume a lot of these these kickers that like you know, if they see <clears throat> going up because they just want it to be like clockwork. Also, wait, one, what, two, three. Was it Turpin who returned the kick return for a touchdown? It was Turpin, right? On the 
on the Dallas when they returned that for a touchdown. Like the actual kick return? Or yeah, the, yeah. Oh, I don't know. The don't one know. for a touchdown. I think it was Turpin. Which, again, in, again, in this situation, why were you kicking it to Turpin? Who's well-known <laughs> as one of the better kick returners and I think the fastest guy in the league right now. Like, I think he's had the fastest top speed. Who's um, their kicker? Uh, Seabert. I just watched another person try to parallel park. He messed it up, though. Um, but if he, I mean, how big is his leg? I know these kickers. Yeah, but you could squib it. I guess. Yeah. That's, that's. Uh. It's also just funny because I mean, Turpin literally the drops the snap, every... presses, presses the O button, and all of a sudden there's nobody around him. You know, like the spin move. And the, yeah, 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 yeah. One spin and then there's no one yeah. near him. So I mean, if you, yeah, I, I think these guys just kind of do. If they got the leg for it, just touch back every time. I know, but I, I kind of felt like that was a situation where you squib it. But what do I know? But anyway, even if he doesn't, you shouldn't allow kick return for a touchdown, and you shouldn't miss an extra point in a field goal too. Well, I mean, it's a little like with this new kickoff stuff. Like, are kickoff returns up when they actually run it back? Uh, they are up slightly, but most of the time in big situations. They're telling their kicker to just make sure you kick it out the back of the end zone. Or deep Generally, enough. Yes. Or yeah. deep enough. And I think Austin can do it. I've seen him do it. So. I, I figured the modern <laughs> kicker usually could. Yeah. I feel like they should have been sure. They should have been like, listen, you're either kicking this thing 10 yards deep in the end zone or you're squibbing it. Like, we cannot allow a return here. But they did. And they screwed it up. So congratulations to the Washington Special Teams Unit for this week's Darwin Award winner. That has been it for Slow Your Roll. Have a great Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your crappy football. <laughs> and indeed. Enjoy your messy football. Go Cowboys.